You are lying to women. Even if you think you're not, you are. And it's costing you dates, second dates, and amazing relationships. Today, we're gonna to talk about the subject of lying and the three consequences that you're gonna suffer as a lack of radical honesty. One, a lack of attraction, a lack of connection, and resentment. Let's first talk about how a lack of radical honesty leads to a lack of attraction. Most men think they're super nice and honest with women. I'm a very nice guy, I'm a very genuine guy, but you're not really. First of all, let's talk about how you're not even communicating your intention honestly. If you are playing it super nice and safe in your communication with her, be that on the initial approach, on online dating apps, or on the first date, you are not being honest. If you don't develop a degree of man-to-woman connection, in other words, intimacy in a respectful way, but in a radically honest way early on, she will be left confused as to what you actually want from her. And since women oftentimes think that men actually just want to be friends with them, she might put you in the friend zone as a result of you not being fully honest. Let's pick a different example. She says, oh yeah, I really like art. You're sitting on a date, she talks to you about how she likes paintings. And you say, yeah, yeah, it's cool, it's really interesting. Even though deep down inside, you couldn't give a single fuck about paintings. But you still say, yeah, it's cool, it's actually interesting. Even though you don't find it interesting at all. Now you don't say, I love it, but you also don't tell her, well, I couldn't really give a fuck about it, which you should be saying. Now, some people might say, well, David, that's disrespectful. No, not at all, because you're not insulting her passion. You're not insulting art in general. You're just expressing a radically honest opinion. Let me tell you something. If you want women to get actually excited about you, if you want to find an amazing relationship with a high quality woman, she's supposed to be excited about you. And therefore, you need to communicate like Moses who parts the Red Sea. You need to be somebody who gets certain women to be very displeased with his existence purely because you communicate your values and your opinions so honestly, but on the other hand, you communicate in a way that some women get genuinely excited about you because you have the same things in common. And remember, the number one predictor for success in a relationship is not communication and trying to fix things later on. Yes, communication leads to attraction, but the number one predictor for success is compatibility. And the easiest way to find out whether there's compatibility or not is for you to communicate your opinions in a radically honest fashion. So you telling her that you like Chinese food if you actually prefer Italian food, you telling her that it's no problem that she cancels the plan, the date with you last minute, all these are signs of a lack of radical honesty. And I know you're just trying to be nice, you're just trying to be kind and Yes, we want to be calibrated. We want to be a respectful person. This is radical honesty does not mean being disrespectful. It does not mean not using the words thank you, please, saying I'm sorry when you have to. It does not mean not using push-pull and telling the person what you like about them and then layering in a degree of criticism towards their behavior, but wrapping it in a way where it's easily digestible. It does not mean not being intelligent with your communication. But you have to understand that there's a spectrum from being super fake to get along to being so honest that you're absolutely unrelatable. You are probably on a scale more on the side of playing it nice and safe. And I don't want you to go all the way to the other side where you're not relatable anymore, where you're insulting people, where you're actively abrasive towards strangers and women. That's not what this is about at all. But if you're on a date and she tells you she likes X and you say, I just don't give a fuck about that at all. Or it's like, I really don't like that whatsoever. I couldn't give a fuck about it in a teasy, playful way with positive energy, not negative energy. You can say it while smiling while still bringing positive energy, right? This, when, when she tells me she's into paintings and I say, fuck paintings, I don't like him, blah, that's negative energy. That's not what you want to bring to the date whatsoever. But you can say, yeah, I just don't give a fuck about that at all. I couldn't possibly understand how somebody pays millions for a little bit of red paint somewhere splashed across a canvas. I can do that. I've been able to do that when I was in kindergarten. I failed arts in school. I got an F and uh, I got an F in arts and in French. That's why I had to read a, repeat a year in high school because I sucked 
so bad at it. If you communicate it like that in a fun, playful way with positive energy, it's absolutely fine to communicate radically honest opinions. It will build so much attraction you have no idea. Same in a bar or nightclub. Again, if you want to find an amazing girlfriend or life partner, you never have to go to bars or nightclubs. But if you're there, radical honesty is going to build attraction. Now, let's talk about how a lack of radical honesty leads to a lack of trust. Sam Harris, in his book Lying, says that to lie is to recoil from relationship. When you lie to women, when you lie to people, you automatically, unconsciously assume that they might lie to you as well, which leads to you trusting them less. You lying to people leads to you trusting those people less because you automatically assume that they're capable of doing the same thing. So if you want to trust people more, be more honest. You will be able to get people to trust you at a completely different level. Now, if you are radically honest, this may cause tension and friction and conflict in the short run. But remember what Jordan Peterson says, conflict delayed is conflict multiplied. Let me give you an example of what happened with my personal social circle in Dublin yesterday. <clears throat> We were scheduled to meet at a friend's house, like a bunch of close friends, right? just like the inner circle. And one of the girls, she asked, hey, can I bring person X along? And somebody, one of my friends goes, yeah, no problem, because he doesn't mind. The rest was kind of like waiting around in the group chat. And I say, no, I prefer not to. That was not the aim of the evening. And that caused conflict. And we talked about it later. People were like, ooh, there was a degree of tension in the air. And was that a negative impulse for that person when I refused her request? Yes, absolutely. But we specifically have that group with that selection of people in that group and no one else. So if we invite these people, I would rather not have somebody else there for that particular line. If we throw a big party, I don't care who comes. I can mingle. I'm a social person. I can make friends with people, but that one particular individual I happen to not like. And I communicate that in a radically honest fashion. Now, I was respectful. I was absolutely respectful in the way I communicated it, but I was very clear. No, please not. I prefer not to. And if she had then started arguing about it with me, which she did not, I would have insisted on my point because the invite was sent out specifically to the people in that group. <clears throat> Now, what was the result of that? The result of that was a little bit of friction in the, in the short term, but a much more pleasant evening that followed. I felt more free in my expression because I don't want to have people around me that I don't like. You got to offer yourself to people. If you want to meet an amazing woman, if you want to meet high quality male friends, if you're a man with a successful career or your own business and you want to meet an amazingly high quality woman or amazing high quality male friends, which you probably don't have enough of, let's be honest, then you need to offer yourself. You need to come with positivity, with a big smile on your face. You gotta offer value first. You gotta have a big funnel of leads. You gotta have a big influx of leads of potential people who can then become a best friend or a wife or girlfriend or partner at the same time. But just offering yourself is only the first step. You then also have to disqualify the wrong ones very quickly because I don't enjoy spending my time around people who have different values to me. I want to have a very enjoyable Saturday night with my close friends with a specific type of humor I know is going to offend that one particular individual. There's an utter lack of political correctness in that group. We're very respectful, we're all about kindness. We're all about encouraging each other, but there's an utter lack of political correctness and the humor we have will offend certain people. So I didn't want that individual there. So now, what does that lead to? Short-term conflict, long-term peace and harmony. And also, people will learn they can trust me. Now, am I 100% honest all the time? No, that would be a lie. Anybody who says they never lie, they lie. It's still an effort of mine to become more honest, more honest all the time. Now, when I do catch myself lying, something small usually, I try to go and make amends. I try to tell that person, or at the very least, I try, try to make a commitment to myself to never let that happen again, even with strangers. Now, 
There's a difference between lying to strangers or people that you're in an actual relationship with. But if you read Sam Harris's book on lying, which I greatly recommend, you'll see the value of never ever lying. It is so important for the relationship with yourself. It is so important for the relationship with people because most of the time it comes out. And it is much better for you to be somebody who's a little bit more edgy, sometimes a little bit more difficult to deal with, but people can actually rely on you than to be nice and pleasant, but people know you're gonna stab them in the back or they can't count on you. If you say something as a man, your word has to be your bond. Congruence in thoughts, words, and actions leads to inner peace within yourself and within the relationships to other people. Now the third component, the third consequence you're gonna suffer that comes as a, re as a result of a lack of honesty, which is resentment. <clears throat> So often I see men who are in relationships with women who are not communicating their needs authentically. For example, their need to work more, their need to spend more time with other high quality friends, their need to do X, Y, Z, their need to go play golf. And whatever it is that you don't communicate honestly, or let's say she does something wrong and you don't call her out on it. That's a big one. I see that with clients all the time. She says something, client tells me, well, I had this thought, it really pissed me off. For example, she ske you schedule a date with her and she cancels an hour before. Client goes, oh, well, no problem. How about, so you're supposed to meet her on Thursday. How about Saturday or Sunday? You offer your entire weekend after she cancels an hour before. I ask him, what were your thoughts initially? Well, I was pissed off. I thought, what the fuck? Why didn't you say that? Now, you still need to run the thoughts through a filter and make it more digestible but still honest. Most of you filter things way too much or you don't even say it at all. If you don't address the things that piss you off with your close friends or with women, you will never be able to have an amazing relationship because there'll be resentment within you. So what you should say in that case, let's say you schedule a date, she cancels within an hour, and there's different ways, right? Maybe she apologizes, says, I'm super sorry, my dog died. Well, what are you gonna do? You can't really be angry. But if she says, sorry, something else came up, had to cancel, right? Depends on how she does it. But I would say, look, this is not cool. We had a date scheduled, we had this plan. Please let me know at least 24 hours beforehand in the future, okay? Boom, then you pull it out. You can be super respectful about the way you do it, but if you don't address it at all, there will be resentment within you and that will destroy the relationship. That resentment that's gonna flow through your body as a result of not expressing your honest thoughts, feelings and opinions in a respectful and calibrated manner will mess you up and it'll mess up all of the relationships you could possibly have. So the takeaways for today, if you wanna get women to be excited about you, if you want people, high quality men and women to trust you, if you want to feel free and at peace, be more honest. Make a commitment to radical honesty. Be a kind, warm person. Say sorry, say thank you. Use push-pull. Be intelligent in your communication, but reduce the filters. If you have a thought, communicate it in an honest and authentic way, and your relationships will improve. I sincerely wish you all the best.